Representative, thank you so much for being with us right now. I want to start thank big you. picture and narrow down. This was a question Poppy asked earlier when we were talking. I think it's dead on right. Do you think the president is truly committed to the conservative agenda? I think the president uh, has actually, we've delivered on his agenda pretty much about every, on the House side, except for tax reform, which is very complicated. It's important that we continue to debate and discuss these issues. I know everyone does a lot of hand wringing and they like to have these deals done and the president talks about deals. But I come from a, a, a world of the former New York State Assembly and the, what it is today in our government. And that's where deals are made by three men in a room behind closed doors. Yeah. We're making deals out in front where the peop it's transparent and people can see. We're arguing, we're debating. And I think that's the way our system was set up. So there's nothing wrong with that. So when I say delivered on his agenda, we passed the American Health Care Act, whether you like it or not. It was nothing more than a negotiating piece for the Senate to go in and come up with their negotiating piece, bring us back into reconciliation. We passed you know, huge reforms to the VA. Uh, we just passed a 12-part appropriations bill, the first time we've done that on regular order since 2009. So we've, and that included funding for the wall. The only thing really we had that of all his agenda items is really, you know, dealing so, with tax reform. So yeah, Congresswoman, yeah. one of the reasons I like sitting next yeah. to John so much, and I'm glad he's back from <laughs> yeah. Hurricane Zone, is because he asked very direct questions. Yeah. And what he asked is, do you think the president mm -hmm. is committed to the conservative agenda? I hear what you on the House yeah. side have done, but ye right. yes well, or okay, no, I'm I mean, sorry. is he really committed to the conservative agenda? I think he's committed to the agenda that he ran on, which is more of a populist agenda. It's conservative in many ways, but it's also populist. It's yeah, but he pro promised no amnesty, issues, he promised trade. a wall, and now well, we're hearing very different things. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't signed a deal with the Democrats, as far as I know. Uh, the DACA issue is still out there. There's Republicans are still trying to figure out how we're going to deal with this issue. But in a way, he actually rescued DACA from possibly being challenged okay. constitutionally. Uh, 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 so, on that specifically, so, and again. Yeah, so is he committed to the agenda? I think we'll see what happens in the okay. end. I think he's a negotiator. I think he's out there tweaking everybody a little bit to try to come up with, with where do you really stand. He's making people come out and say, here's where I am on these issues. Well, I think there are also people trying to figure out where he really stands uh, yeah. as, as well. And that may be more That's elusive true. than the other question right mm -hmm. now. So, Representative, I, I think the question on DACA specifically is, and we don't know exactly what the mm -hmm. deal is or Neither will. Or, or will be. You don't. <laughs> Not yet. Right? And, and you're yeah. a Republican member of Congress. Yes, you would right. think if there were details, they would be known by you. But would you be willing to grant legal status in return for border security. Not a wall, yeah. but border security. Well, yeah, my concern with the president's dealing is what do we get? Did he, what did he negotiate for us? What do we you don't insist on? What do you need? I would like to see us, remember, you, we talk about DACA, there's, and, I, and I would be interested in helping legalize some of these people who have come here through no fault of their own, but the question of citizenship is the real question. And so when you make them citizens, what about all their family members and their uh, people that are now eligible to come in? Remember something really important. We have over four million people waiting to be legal citizens my of this country. My understanding on the so do we put these people to the front of the line or not? I, or I think do on we? the Dreamer yeah. legislation that they're right. building this on, they were never at the front of the line. I, I, I think the right. Dreamer issue with well, legal status were always at the end of the line for citizenship. True. And there is a, an act that I'm considering uh, being a co-sponsor of uh, from Congressman Carlos Curbelo. It's called the RAC Act, Recognizing mm -hmm. America's Children. And what it does is give us a humane way of looking and saying, okay, these children were brought here through no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. Let's go in and consider and making sure they, they can prove that they're going to be legal citizens, they have moral character, mm -hmm. all those things, and then they can get legal you, status. You also so I, de I think that's, a, I think that's a, a step, and I think the president and a lot of members of Congress have signed on to this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something I'm going to consider. I think it's a, a way to look at it. You also have a, a fellow Republican mm -hmm. member of Congress, uh, Congressman uh, Raul Labrador, saying, mm -hmm. No way, do not do DACA only legislation. You give away all your leverage. Now, there's nothing indicating that the president mm. will do DACA only, but he's also not insisting on wall funding, which was like promise number one on the campaign trail. Yeah. Do you agree with Representative Labrador that, I, that, it, that indeed it does give up all your leverage? I think it's, it would be unfortunate if Republicans just address DACA. I think you have to look at the entire immigration system. Uh, the immigration that we have, as I said, four million people, over four million, waiting legally to come in. We have a refugee program. We bring people in from war-torn countries. I, I live in a city where we have one of the largest refugee populations. I helped work with uh, bringing Bosnian refugees in during the war because of my experience in the former Yugoslavia. I worked for the consulate of Yugoslavia many years ago when I lived in New York. So yeah, all these things need to be considered. There's many pieces of the puzzle 
And I think just isolating DACA is just one part of the process. I think looking at how we solve the immigration problem, I think the president put a, he, he really said, we want you to do this in six months. If you don't, I'm going to readdress right. it. And I think that was a tactic mm -hmm. for negotiating. We need to wake up and we need to do, deal with this problem. As soon as we get pa done with tax reform, which I think is the primary issue, we've been given a little bit of a breather. So we have six months. We go back to the drawing board. Let's finally resolve this issue with uh, immigration. Wouldn't it be great if mm -hmm. this president of all presidents and our House and our, our Senate actually solve this problem. I think it would be a really great thing. You have either six months or maybe another Chinese dinner or two. <laughs> with chocolate pie. With, with chocolate pie. Don't it might not take six dessert. months. I don't think the president's going to give up on the wall, by the way. He said yesterday over and over he was going to continue. He's going to have the wall. You don't think, but do you know? Uh, who knows? That's right. Well, that's the answer to all these questions right now. We're that's what makes it exciting. Claudia Tenney, great to have you <laughs> with us. You. I think that explains quite a bit. Really appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you for being here. Have a nice weekend. So the monster storm. Ugh.